In a land far, far away. Wait a minute. Let me redo that one. In a land that's actually quite close, aka Seattle, there exists a special type of girl. Typically Asian, typically with the common dating preference. Asian guys remind me of my brother. No, I don't like Asian guys because they all remind me of my brother. These same girls, aka Luz, are like Pokemon. They evolve. The first generation of Luz fixated on the brother argument, but the next generation of Luz goes quite, quite a, a bit, bit deeper. deeper. I don't gravitate towards Asian dude. I forget that I'm Asian sometimes. In today's video, we're gonna analyze the evolved Lou, look at her argument, give our honest reaction to it, and even break it down with the help of a brother from another TikTok mother. Stop blaming Asian men for your internalized racism. So in the past, on this channel, we've exposed every type of Lou in the wild. From Lin7x. You're a dork, you're a weeb, and you're an incel. To the pink haired Lou. I don't think I could date an Asian guy again. To the whatever Lou. You, you don't date Asian guys? Um, I've never, no. And even the whatever Lou's distant cousin. What's one race you laddies wouldn't date? Asian. Huh? Today, we can see that the previous generation of Lou's are evolving. Perhaps they found the Lou stone. Similar to in Pokemon, you give Pikachu the Thunderstone and then Pikachu turns into Raichu and uh, the Raichu's more powerful. All right, Mr. Editor, cut this part out. Oh no. Anyways, we can see that the Gen Z Lou's are different than the Boomer and Millennial Lou's since they aren't making the case anymore that they don't date Asian guys because they look like their brother. In fact, these evolved Lou's have progressed past physical looks and are now making the cultural upbringing argument. Let us evaluate this argument from a modern day Lou, aka the Gen Z Lou. What the fuck? I can't even see the screen right now. It's so blurry. Hold up, hold up one sec. Much better. 70% of the time, whenever I see discourse on Asian women dating non-Asian men, within the Asian American community, a lot of the times it's Asian men up in arms about it. And they're like, oh, Asian girls say that they won't do us because uh, we remind them too much of their fathers and brothers. What do we look, do we do we all look though like to you? That's internalized racism. And like, here's the thing, I can't speak for every Asian American woman who doesn't particularly want to date an Asian man. Uh, but for me personally, no. No, it's the it's not the way you look. It's the way you behave. It's the way you act, including the way you're acting right now, responding to this video. Um, I was raised with an older brother. All right, so as we can see, she's got an interesting piercing on her nose. Anyways, that's not even the point of the video. Basically, we can see that this Gen Z Lou is talking really fast. I think Gen Zers like to just talk super fast. Honestly, I don't know what she's responding to in terms of the original post because it looks like it's a response post, but she's basically trying to make the argument that Asian guys are complaining about Asian girls not dating them because they're making the classic Lou argument. And I feel like she's trying to... <laughs> I don't know, like there's so much evidence out there, right? That these Lou's are already making the brother argument. I mean, your boy has already made multiple videos of these millennial and boomer Lou's making the brother argument. For her to discount this and say it doesn't exist is just not correct. That's like saying like, if girls are saying they don't date short guys and there's a bunch of girls already saying like, oh, we prefer like six foot two guys and above. And then some girls just like addressing to a short guy. You know, I'm sick and tired of this. You think we're not dating you because you're short, but it's actually because of your shitty personality. Like what the fuck? Obviously the shitty person personality is gonna come into play, right? But you can't just deny the other fact that like these other girls are already making a point and it's a well-known fact that a lot of girls prefer taller guys. And I feel like this girl is making the same point here with the original Lou argument. She's just saying like, no, 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 we're not dating you because you look like my brother. It's because of, and let's see what she says. All right, and don't you fucking try and tell me that Asian culture has no influence on that. It's not because we're Asian, uh, because fuck. Confucianism 100% still affects my family dynamic, okay? And so I'm not going to willingly, knowingly invite someone into my life that I think has had the same upbringing uh, to think about women the way my brother and father were uh, without having broken that cycle. All right, so we got a lot to unpack here, right? Essentially, this Lou, right? Just moving to the cultural upbringing argument, which is like Confucianism, Asian upbringing, it's super toxic, it's misogynistic. This is a classic argument, by the way. Like, we've already heard this before. These Lou's make the excuse that like, oh, I don't like Asian guys because they remind me of my father. And like maybe they had like a poor upbringing just because you had a poor upbringing with your family doesn't mean you should generalize all asian guys like that because at the end of the day right every human is an n equals one this is why i'm a huge advocate of not having a victim mindset because at the end of the day right we all have control over our own lives let's say me before right i thought like oh i'm short and asian i'm screwed in dating 
because that's what the stats say. You know, by putting the hard work in, going out, hitting cold approaches, hiring a coach, taking courses, like investing a bunch of time, effort, and money, I was actually able to turn my dating life around. And I feel like shit like this with the lose saying like, making generalizations it's just not healthy right especially for the psyche or ego of the younger asian guy like i'm just imagining myself right five years ago when i was much more insecure about my asianness especially in the dating context like seeing already that like back in the day there weren't many positive mask and role models in the media and also getting beaten down by these blues on social media it's just not good if you're trying to take action in your own life says so, you know there's the whole saying that your environment becomes your reality strong-willed as someone is if they're around so many negative stimuli externally that just shows you that like maybe being asian is not a desirable thing or a good thing and it actually does affect your inner game or how you view yourself so that's why i call this kind of shit out because basically this is just like the classic lou logic the classic lou logic is like i'm gonna take like a one use case and then apply it to a whole population that totally discounts all the asian guys out there that are good fathers that totally dismisses the experience of asian guys putting the work in to level up to be attractive it just basically takes like us asian guys and distills it down to <laughs> just like a general statement that all of us you know we look like our brothers or fathers or stepmothers or okay, not stepmothers but you know you shouldn't take what these girls say seriously i actually saw a response to this clip which had a really solid answer and honestly i thought it was very powerful because it came from someone that's not asian so let's just take a look and i think for this one i could take my glasses off this guy speaks some facts stop blaming asian men for your internalized racism because what you're doing is you're holding every single asian man accountable for the dysfunction that you grew up with and it's not fair to the asian men that are out here doing the work and that have identified the very same social issues that you take exception to and respectfully this is the kind of thing people work out in therapy they examine how the trauma they experienced in their formative years shapes their current perception and if you perceive a man's Asian-ness as a red flag, you very well may have horseshoed yourself into racism. And I hope the irony of that is not lost on you. The, the idea that you might be so open-minded and so progressive, but yet don't date Asian men. And also, I don't like this idea of Asian men being painted as bad guys for wanting to understand society's aversion to them. Because it's not just Asian women, it's other groups as well. And it's no coincidence that there's an uptick in interest in Asian men when things like K-pop or anime get more popular. So it's worth entertaining the possibility that this aversion to Asian men is something else that's happening at the subconscious level. Remember, stop Asian hate includes Asian men. Yeah, this guy's speaking facts. I think he's a very popular TikToker who's like one of those like anime guys. I actually don't know too much about him. I just saw this clip. I totally agree with everything he said. I really like how he's super articulate actually. He kind of just like destroyed her with her own logic since you can tell that that first girl is definitely like more left leaning just by the piercing on her nose. But typically these like super left leaning people, right? I don't want to get too into politics, but just from what I've noticed with my own experience, I just think that a lot of these people like preach social justice, equality, um, especially those that are like more Lou types. They're like so woke that it's okay to bring down Asian guys. Last time I checked, uh, you know, <laughs> we're a minority here, right? And I'm pretty sure the population of Asians in America is like 7%, right? So I feel like maybe it just hasn't crossed her mind that she's so woke, she can't even see that she's racist, right? By making this kind of comment. And that's like my issue with the Gen Z Lou's or just Lou's in general, because a lot of times you kind of see these, especially in Seattle, where they're like very left-leaning, super progressive, but but then ironically enough, they just love dating white guys. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong with dating white guys. I have plenty of white friends and you know, you can date whoever you want, but I do have a problem when you not only put down Asian guys, but then make it seem like it's like such an accomplishment to date white guys. And then if you point this kind of thing out with these woke lose, right? Like the woke lose, they're just like, oh, you know, it just sucks that I'm dating a white guy. Like, I have so much guilt for it, but it's like, well, actions speak louder than words. You can go to as many protests and rallies as you want. You can post as much as you want on social media, but at the end of the day, right, you're dating a white guy and nothing wrong with that. But I just think that if you're going to preach social justice, then, you know, you should also have your actions be congruent with your words. That's my whole take on these woke lose. I do agree with this guy, right? I feel like there are plenty of Asian guys that are putting in the work, like I said earlier. And I feel like to have these, you know, Gen Z lose, get all mad about that, right? They're putting in the work in and then they're questioning reality because you learn in school that if something doesn't make sense, you ask questions. Any educated human being is going to ask questions and try to figure out the reason why 
the other side has that take. And this girl's getting like all defensive from the original poster asking those questions. But the reality is like the reason that STEM skills are valued, right, is because you use like logic and science and reasoning to come up with the conclusions, you know, create algorithms, analyze things, make decisions in the business context. Like all of these things are valued skills. So I don't know why this girl's getting super defensive when people are just trying to ask questions like, oh, why does she feel this way? Or like, why is she a loot, right? Yeah, in general, I really applaud this young man for making this video. He went out of his way. Like he has no reason to go out and help us Asian brothers out there, but it actually does a lot more hearing it from in this case what i call an ally than from an asian guy itself right if someone sees my videos on the lose they're just gonna paint me as like some bitter rice cell like that's like super angry of the world when obviously if you guys watch my content that's not the case but if they see an ally making this type of video they can't say shit because he has no vested interest in this argument and he's analyzing it from a third party perspective but i think at the end of the day there's a few key takeaways here the first one being you gotta ignore these lose at all costs since there's nothing you gain from entertaining these lose they're just wrong in my opinion they're just generalizing their own experience onto a population of Asian guys. I think they're just trying to justify their own reality, right? In general, people behave in a way that aligns with their own reality. That's why cognitive dissonance is a thing when there's like a discomfort when reality and your expectations have a misalignment. These losers are just going out there because they kind of think that maybe if they make this type of content or they say these type of arguments, they're going to get the support of other leads who think that way. But, you know, they also probably get the support of non-Asian guys who might not like Asian guys right there's plenty of guys out there that don't like it when asian guys win not everyone is like your boy chang who wants to see asian guys win my whole purpose is to serve as that one-stop shop i wish i had when i was younger or to really just help out anyone who's struggling with being an asian guy in the u.s that's why i offer coaching that's why i host a retreat is because there's a need for this right and i want to help out i'm not one of those guys who's just trying to pressure people to buy my stuff right because at the end of the day i want to give this stuff away for free which is why i make youtube videos and i try to make as much as possible just so you guys have free content and value at your fingertips and if you're ever trying to you know level up in life or just need some guidance i'm here for you guys but that's kind of just like my purpose of this channel is to really just be that resource i wish i personally had when i was younger and that leads to my second point which is you want to just focus on yourself the losers are going to keep evolving you know there's going to be the lose that just make the brother argument they're going to take the lose stone and evolve into the next generation of lose and perhaps they're going to dynamax one day if you guys don't know what dynamax is it's like when the pokemon you know becomes like super charged um mr editor please uh put like a a graphic here to explain so your boy doesn't look silly <laughs> oh no but uh yeah i mean like eventually leaves are gonna keep changing shapes and forms so you can't really control what they do but what you can do is just focus on yourself i have a lot of resources out there talking about you know your looks verbal status just basically how to better yourself so just check out my channel check out my videos and feel free to comment any questions you have below and the last key takeaway which i think is arguably the most important is you want to pay it forward so kind of similar to how for me i went through a lot of struggles and was able to overcome it and then now i create content to try to help people out i feel like you can do that in your own life you know you don't have to be a youtuber or content creator if you see like a younger asian guy who's struggling with something or you know at work you know there's like an asian employee that you can probably help out just help them out right i feel like one thing that indians do really well is like they just get each other's backs and i made this point in a separate video but i feel like asian people especially east asians tend to be more competitive with each other so there doesn't seem to be this like underlying camaraderie but i encourage you guys in whatever facet of life that you have success to just pay it forward similar to how this super nice black guy is paying it forward for us right he's making this content calling that shit out reacting and going viral getting a lot of allies on our side against the fight versus versus lose. I want to see you guys do that in your own life, you know, because I feel like at the end of the day, right, we all die. Plain and simple reality of being a human currently. And as great as it is to just focus on yourself, I think that next level of purpose is like paying it forward and giving back. Even for me, right, I'm way more focused on growing my YouTube channel, helping out as many guys as possible, hosting as many retreats as possible, you know, just doing whatever I can to help out Asian guys versus I used to be really focused on bodybuilding. You know, I got my pro card in natural bodybuilding three years ago, but honestly, I'm way more motivated to build out chain nation because i think there's much more impact of me helping guys out making content versus me just getting as jacked as possible that's not to say you can't do both simultaneously in parallel but i think oftentimes a lot of asian guys you know they'll get success in their own lives but then they won't necessarily pay it forward not because they don't want to but they just maybe don't know how 
at the end of the day, there's always going to be Lou's. There's going to be another Lou on social media. There's going to be another Lou in real life. There's going to be another Lou that is trying to put you down. You know, maybe you're out at the club and then the Lou steps in and tries to cock block you, right? You're always going to see and run into Lou's in every stage of life. And the onus is on you to ignore these girls, continue to take action and really just live your life and become the best possible Chang you can be. Now, if you're an Asian guy looking to level up in your fitness, dating and social life and really just start taking action, be sure to check out my next vlog right here. We'll pop it up. Basically, I hosted five guys in Vegas for the Chang retreat where we essentially had photo shoots, we hung out and we went out together. So it was honestly a blast. Like everyone had a great time. We even had one guy in the next video get an epic haircut transformation. I actually paid for his haircut out of my own pocket since I knew it'd make a big difference, especially with the photo shoots. So be sure to check out that story arc right here in the corner. I'm gonna link it there. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.